Electronegativity and Polarity Part 2 Polarity of Molecules In the previous part, we saw that when you have a covalent bond and the electrons are unevenly distributed like this, we have one side that is slightly negative and the other side is slightly positive. So we have two poles across this bond. We can say that this bond has a permanent dipole. This is another way of saying that we have a polar bond. And the reason it's permanent is because the oxygen will always be the negative pole and the hydrogen atom will always be the positive pole. Okay, so let's say that this OH bond was part of a water molecule. Does this mean that water will also be a polar molecule? To answer that, we're going to have to look at the structure of water. So, we know that a water molecule has this shape. Now once again, oxygen is always going to be the negative pole, and the hydrogen atoms are always going to be positive. So, we can see that we have polar bonds. Now, if we look at this molecule as a whole, we can put a line through the middle, and say that at the top we have a negative side, and at the bottom we have a positive side. So not only does this molecule have polar bonds, but it itself is a polar molecule. So how do we know if a molecule is polar? There are two steps. Step one, does the molecule have any polar bonds? The answer can be either yes or no. If it's no, that means it's not going to be a polar molecule. However, if the answer is yes, we have to look at step two. Step two is we need to draw out the three-dimensional shape of the molecule. Now it's important that you know how to do this, so I recommend watching the video on shapes of molecules before continuing. However, if you're confident with drawing the shapes of molecules, then from here on we can determine if the molecule will be a polar molecule or if it will be non-polar. So let's do some examples on how shape affects polarity. We're going to use CCl4, also known as tetrachloromethane, as our first example. So in this molecule, one carbon atom is bonded to four chlorine atoms. So first of all, does this molecule contain any polar bonds? Let's look at the Pauling scale. We can see that carbon has an electronegativity of 2.5 and chlorine has an electronegativity value of 3. So the difference between them is 0 0.5, which means that if we look at this bond, we're going to have a negative and positive pole. And if we look at this bond, once again, we're going to have a negative and positive pole. And the same applies for the other two, because it's the same element. So we can see that this molecule does have polar bonds. But is it a polar molecule? To answer that, we're going to have to draw it in its three-dimensional shape. So tetrachloromethane has a tetrahedral shape. Okay, so what we're going to do is imagine we have a scanner that scans for negative or positive charge. We're going to start with one end of the molecule. So for example here, we're going to start from the top. So of course we know the top is negative. We're going to go down and now we see the carbon atom which is slightly positive. And as we keep on going down, we once again hit a negative area. So we want to know if this molecule has two distinct regions of negative and positive charge. If we quickly bring up the water molecule, we can see that it has a negative pole and a positive pole. So there are two distinct regions. However, on the molecule on the right, we can see we have a negative at the top, then positive in the middle, and then back to negative at the bottom. So we do not have two specific regions, and therefore there is no overall polarity. Because what's going to happen is all the charges are going to jumble up and cancel out. So here we have a non-polar molecule, even though it had polar bonds. Let's look at another example. Here we have trichloromethane. So all that's happened here is one of the chlorines has swapped for a hydrogen. 
Now remember, the chlorine and carbon bonds are always going to be polar, because we know this from the previous example. However, what about the carbon-hydrogen bond? So once again, if we look at the Pauling scale, hydrogen is 2.1 and carbon is 2.5. So that gives us a difference of 0 0.4, which is not enough to classify this as a polar bond. So the carbon-hydrogen bond will not have any charges between them. Okay, so we do have at least some polar bonds. Now we have to draw this in its three-dimensional shape, which is still going to be tetrahedral. And to make things easier, I've put the hydrogen on top. So once again, if we bring our scanner, First of all, we're going to scan the hydrogen, and since there's no charge, we're going to keep on moving. Carbon is positive, keep going, and we get to a negative area. So, does this molecule have two distinct regions? If you look at the molecule as a whole, we can put a line through here and say we have a positive area at the top and a negative area at the bottom. So here we do have a polar molecule. Let's use carbon dioxide as another example. Carbon dioxide looks like this. Carbon has an electronegativity of 2.5 and oxygen 3.5. So a difference of 1, which means we're going to have polar bonds. Next, let's find out if it's a polar molecule. Now this is actually the 3D shape of carbon dioxide. It's a linear molecule. So we don't have to draw it in any special way. Okay, next, let's go and scan the molecule. So this time, we're going to start from one end we have a negative area, move across, here there's a positive area, and then move across again, and we have a negative area. So, are there two distinct regions? Once again, we can say there aren't, because we have negative, then positive, and then negative again. So, in this scenario, the charges will cancel out, and we have a non-polar molecule. Okay, let's have a go at some exam-style questions. Here we have four molecules, and the question is asking us which molecule does not have a permanent dipole. So when it says which molecule, it means look at the molecule as a whole and not just the bonds. Let's start with A. So in A we have bromomethane. So we have a carbon that's bonded to three hydrogens and one bromine. I've chosen to put the bromine on top. You could put it in any direction, but it makes it easier to have that one at the top. Okay, we know that carbon-hydrogen bonds are non-polar, and carbon-bromine bond, it will be polar. So one side we can see there's a positive charge, and the other side there's a negative charge. So this molecule does have two distinct regions, and therefore it is a polar molecule. Moving on to the next one, dibromomethane. So now we have two bromines and two hydrogens. Once again, carbon is positive, and bromine is negative. So there are two distinct regions. Once again, we have a polar molecule. Now we have tribromomethane. So here I've put the three bromines at the bottom and one hydrogen goes to the top. Carbon is positive and the bromines are negative. So we have two distinct regions and we have a polar molecule. And the last one is going to be the non-polar molecule tetrabromomethane, but let's draw it out and see why. So, tetrabromomethane looks like this. So, negative at the bottom, positive in the middle, but then negative on top. So here, we don't have two distinct regions, and the charges will cancel out, and so here we have a non-polar molecule. Okay, let's move on to another question. Which molecule has the largest dipole? So once again, it's saying, which molecule is polar? Starting with A, we have chlorine bonded to three fluorine atoms. So remember, using our shapes table, this will fall under the family of five bonds, three bonded pairs and two lone pairs, which is also known as T-shape. However, the angle is slightly closer. It's not going to be 90 degrees. It's going to be tilted a little bit like this. It's actually 87.5. Now, if you look at the periodic table, the difference between chlorine and fluorine is 1. So that means when a chlorine is bonded to a fluorine, you are going to get polar bonds. 
but will this be a polar molecule? We can see that if we look at it from this direction, we have a negative side, and here we have a positive side. And so, this is a polar molecule. Moving on to B, boron trifluoride. If you use the Pauling scale, you'll notice that the boron fluorine bond is a polar bond. Boron trifluoride has a trigonal planar shape. So we have a negative side at the top, the middle is positive, and once again the bottom is negative. So overall it is nonpolar. Moving on to sulfur hexafluoride, SF6. This has an octahedral shape. The bonds are polar if you look at the Pauling scale. So if we start from top, we have negative, once again negative, the middle is positive, but then the surroundings are also negative. So overall, nonpolar. And finally, if you look at tetrafluoromethane, CF4, we know the bonds are going to be polar, but we have a negative side, a positive side, and once again a negative side. So it is nonpolar. Which means the only molecule that has a dipole is going to be ClF3. Okay, one last question. Which of the following substances has a permanent dipole-dipole interaction between the molecules? In other words, which molecule is polar? So if we look at carbon dioxide, D, we know already that this is a non-polar molecule because the charges will cancel out. And if we look at A, tetrachloromethane, once again, we know that this will also be a non-polar molecule. So that leaves us with B and C. So let's look at B. B is tetrafluoroethane. We know the carbon-fluorine bonds are going to be polar bonds. Now if you look across this molecule, we can see we have a negative side, then positive, and then negative. So nonpolar. And therefore, the only polar molecule here must be, by process of elimination, C. This, by the way, is propanone. It's a ketone. So first of all, the only polar bond in this molecule is going to be the carbon-oxygen bond. All the other bonds are nonpolar. Okay, so what about the molecule? We can see that we have a negative side and a positive side. So this molecule has two distinct regions, and therefore it is a polar molecule. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.